Farmland is precious in China. Only 15% of the country is arable. That makes the lush and fertile province of Heilongjiang very important, especially now. Close to the border with Russia, this is soybean country. China's the world's largest consumer of soybeans, but it can't grow enough, and so is reliant on imports to meet demand. That means the decision to impose a 25% levy on US soybeans creates risk. Yet, in this province, the trade fight appears to be having a welcome impact. Farmers like Munfanling are being urged by the local government to switch their fields to soy from corn, offering subsidies as an incentive. That'll raise incomes. Mun says he has a lot to thank President Trump for. When China stops importing from the United States, it's possible the price of domestic soybeans will go up, and that means we will make more money. Soybeans may flourish in this province, but only around 10% of those consumed in China are domestically grown. The instruction to local farmers to grow more soybeans was a political priority. But the reality is this, China is a long way from ever being self-sufficient in soybeans, which means it's going to be reliant on imports for years to come. Hi everybody, I am a soybean. In this cartoon video, like much, China appears to be targeting U.S. farmers. It's been airing on the international service of state TV and has a clear message. China can buy soybeans from other countries. If that happens, soybean farmers in the U.S. could take an even greater hit. The soybean plays an essential role in the Chinese diet, used in cooking oil, sauce, tofu, as well as animal feed. The government's now taking action to ensure there's no shortage. The government is offering more subsidies to soybean farmers, so I believe the government has been very supportive to the whole soybean industry. In the past, cheap soybean imports hurt Chinese growers, but the tariff war with the United States could secure their future. Adrian Brown, Al Jazeera, in Heilongjiang province, northeast China.